the Brandon Tina story. So, of course, first of all, if you don't know who Brandon Tina was, or if you aren't familiar with his story, basically, he was a trans man who was raped and murdered back in 1993 after some people found out that he was biologically female. He was 21 at the time. That is just the very basic outline of his story. And before I even get into his actual story, I just want to address why I'm even bringing up something from over 20 years ago. A lot of the struggles and issues and incidents in Brandon's life are still very relevant to the struggles and issues trans people face today. Yes, it is 2015, but how much has really changed? This particular story deals with a trans man who was raped and murdered, but just looking at transgender people as a whole, I have heard of seven trans women murdered in the U.S. already this year, and it's only March, and those are just the ones I've heard of, and those are just the ones in the US. So just imagine how small that is and all the stories we don't hear about. So right now what I want to do is show you the very beginning of the documentary made in 1998 on his story and we'll take it from there. So last night was actually the first night I ever saw that documentary, and that opening really gave me chills. So I gave you the basic outline of his story at the very beginning of this video, but now I'm going to go into it just a little bit more. This is kind of what I've gathered from watching both the documentary and the film adapt adaptation, I hate saying that word, and also doing some of my own research. So Brandon apparently always dated girls from what I've seen. He... In the documentary, they actually interviewed some of his ex-girlfriends and they just said the nicest things about him. He was just a, a great guy, a gentleman. He, he was, as one of them said, basically the perfect man, just despite the physical aspect. A lot of what it seemed like he wouldn't disclose that he was physically female ever. He seemed to go stealth pretty much all the time. So even with girls there was usually some confusion and and sometimes problems when they did realize that he was physically female basically he ended up leaving uh, his hometown I guess because he didn't feel he felt like too many people knew about his past and that he was physically female and all that so he he relocated and made some new friends, got in a relationship. He ended up getting arrested and obviously was put in with the females. And He had not told anyone that he was physically female. He was going completely as male and no one knew uh, until 
he was arrested and booked as female. People found out. Uh, two two guys who I believe were his considered his friends were actually the people who raped him, and then it was actually they raped him, and then he got away, and they told him not to file a police report or they would hurt him again basically I think and he ended up going to the hospital and all that and a police report was filed I believe somehow I don't remember exactly how that happened but later the two guys went back and murdered Brandon and his and also two other people who were at the house at the time. I believe one of them, it was actually the homeowner who there was a roommate situation and then there was another guy and I don't know exactly the backstory of all that. But yeah, that's basically diving into the story a little bit more. I feel like it's easy for me to put myself in his shoes and that's why this story really brings up a lot of emotions for me and really hits hard. I mean, if the circumstances were different for me, what really made me have this life and him have that life? You know, that could have very easily been me, is the way I see it. And that just really brings me down to earth on, first of all, being thankful for the support from friends and family I do have. And also just remembering that this is still reality for some people. I do feel pretty safe every day, you know, besides the usual anything can happen at any time to anyone, but that applies to everyone, not just me. I don't feel a high level of danger or that I'm unsafe in my everyday life. I would be lying if I said I've never been physically hurt for being transgender, but Overall, in my everyday life, I feel pretty safe, but knowing that that's not a reality for everyone, that trans people are still getting murdered, it, it concerns me that that stuff's still happening, obviously. It shouldn't be happening, but this story just really, really brings me down to where I feel it at a very personal level. I can say in the documentary alone, there were certain situations that brought up a lot of feelings for me because I've been in similar situations. There were also one in particular when he was being questioned by the police about what had happened to him. And they had the actual recordings from the, the questioning and all that. And for a situation once I was questioned by the police and <laughs> so that was, I could definitely put myself in his shoes there and just the, in this time and age and the people I was, the, the detective I was talking to was very respectful and, and understanding and all that. The situation he was in when he was being questioned by the police about everything was uncomfortable for me and I was able to put myself back in that place of thinking how I felt that was uncomfortable for me when it was happening to me in real life but then seeing the way they were talking to him and all that was even more uncomfortable for me and just imagining being actually being in that situation I couldn't even imagine just some of the the treatment and all that really really was just shocking to me and eye-opening I guess and how transgender people have really been treated it's it's really crazy to think about it's it's horrible <laughs> really the film adapt <sighs> there goes that word again the film adaptation boys don't cry was made in 1999 is actually the first thing I ever saw. It was back when I first came out as transgender and I was looking up 
films and stuff that dealt with the topic and it was one of the ones that popped up. I read about it and thought I wanted to check it out. I did watch it. Um, I was really, really shocked at the time. It was really my first look at the violence that trans people can face and I knew it was old but it was just still shocking to me and I hate to say it but it's not as shocking to me now I feel like over the past year I've actually seen firsthand how bad hate can be now so this was a little bit over 20 years ago it's not as surprising to me I think my eyes have just really been open over the past year and that's just realizing that that's just sad that I can even say that I'm no longer surprised by the violence in that movie because of what I've seen today I mean really just looking at it he was just really trying to live life as who he truly was and in the end, he never got the chance. I, it's kind of crazy to think about. I think about now. He he would have been forty something, I think. Yeah. So I mean, I just think about what would he have thought about if he could get on testosterone. You know, if he could actually have gotten surgery. He said he wanted to get surgery, and if he really did want want surgery, how would that have made him? feel you know I, I know how happy I am being on testosterone I can only imagine if if that's what he, he wanted to do how that could have made him feel I why was I given a chance to do all this and he wasn't I just really think the voices and stories and remembering those who never got a chance are is so important to me it's it, we need to learn from it we need to move forward I need to be grateful for what I am able to do and the opportunities I'm able to have and the support I do have and all that. So I'm really trying not to get too emotional. I'm also trying not to make this video too long. I could talk about this story for probably hours and like I said, it also hits really close to home to me. It, it gives me a lot of feelings. Yeah. The last thing I really want to talk about on this story, probably the thing that bothers me the most to this day, I don't know if it should bother me as much as it does because I didn't know him, I don't know his family or anything like that, but it does bother me, is on his headstone, it has his birth name, and it says daughter, sister, and friend. Now, I understand you, the family really didn't ever see him as a guy. But he saw himself as a guy, and I feel like just having that on his headstone just erases who he really was. That doesn't represent him at all, and I think that's just really sad. Just thinking about that and not that person no longer gets a, a say in, in that. They don't get a chance to stand up for themselves, but if you really want something that will truly represent that person, they, they knew who they were. I really tried to chop this up and just hit the main points. Like I said, I could probably talk about this for hours, but those are just my main thoughts on the Brandon Tina story as a whole and just violence against trans people and everything. So. You can check out Boys Don't Cry. You can definitely look up things online. You can, I, I saw, I found the Brandon Tina story on Hulu. So, just if you're interested in that. But yeah, those are my thoughts. That whole story really hits close to home for me. I can really put myself in his shoes. I'm not as quite as confident and as much of a ladies man and I don't think I ever will be I really really look up to him for that he's my inspiration for all that I strive to be as good with the ladies someday but <laughs> yeah other than that I can put myself in his shoes alright peace y'all